Welcome to Inspire and Move, the show that inspires you to create, connect, and grow. I'm going to bring you meaningful conversations, aha moments, and all the motivation you need to uplevel every part of your life. I'm Ali Aruda, founder of Inspire and Move, and your personal hype girl. I've gone from fashion school to celebrity stylist to corporate marketing to brick and mortar entrepreneurship with my husband, each time learning incredible lessons how to pivot, reimagine, and implement the steps to become successful. I am passionate about inspiring others to live their best life, a life of joy. We have the power to design a life that we love because life is too short not to. The best part is that you weren't meant to do this alone. If you feel like you were meant for more, let me ride shotgun with you and together, let's get you to where you want to go. Welcome back to the show. Today we have part two of my interview with my friend and mentor, Lindsay Schwartz. And if you haven't been able to tell already, her energy is absolutely infectious. She lights up her room and she has the most beautiful soul. And I am so excited to dive in to part two. Here we go. I was like, again, mesmerized, what, looking and in, gazing into your eyes. I was like, oh my gosh, yes, it's such a, like, I, I get I'm, really fired up talking about yeah. this. <laughs> I'm like, I feel that so deeply. Yeah. And I'd love to take that and even just kind of, I mean, I love consuming this and, you know, being in this world and seeing it from the outside and all of these people listening that all of these people, you know, there might be only 75 no, of them. But all, all hundred all million trillion of you. That will go probably, you know, deeply consume Lindsay Schwartz and Powerhouse Women. You can gaze into my eyes. Yes. On the internet. It's magical. Highly recommend. <laughs> 10 out of 10 experience. They're going to see the community and connection you have with your girlfriends. I think you have this incredible group of girlfriends that I have loved watching and being in the room with, and it's it's magical. What is your feeling when you you really feel like you have this groundbreaking, like supportive work, like network of girlfriends in mm-hmm. your life? And how has it taken you a long time to have that? Have you had bumps and journey, you know, bumps and peaks and valleys along the mm-hmm. along the way? Yeah. What has that been like? It, it's it been a lot of work. It has. And I think I've always been really great at connecting with people. I do think that's a little bit of like the Midwest in me, which I think that's also a Canadian trait because we're so close. Mm. You know, we're basically just like a hop, skip and a jump across the border. But I've always had this natural curiosity and just like love for people. But where I had to go to work was on allowing myself to be really seen and really supported and that takes vulnerability which was not something I was super comfortable with I would so much rather be the one holding space for and showing up for other people but if you're the only one doing that and you're not allowing someone to also hold space and show up for you the relationship isn't going to have the depth that I think we're all really craving and even just this last year going through some just some really challenging moments I realized how lonely I was feeling. And the only reason I was feeling lonely while also being surrounded, like you said, by just like the most incredible women in my life is because I wasn't willing to let them see me in my less than perfect, less than strong, less than having it all together moments. And not because I was afraid of them judging me because I actually didn't feel judged at all. It was because I didn't want to be a burden you know, to these women who have so much on their plate, they're going through their own challenges and struggles. But the moment that I opened up to a handful who I I just knew, I knew that this was an opportunity for a breakthrough. I think the more you do personal development, you realize that when you're in those moments where everything in you is resisting it and you're like, no, yes, no, yes. You're having this little struggle with your, in yourself. You're like, this is the next opportunity for growth if you'll just step through this door. And I remember sending a a Voxer note to my business partner, who's also like one of just my best friends in the world. And I was like, "Um, can, I'm like getting emotional thinking about it. I was like, can we just set up a time to talk so I can tell you what's going on right now? And she's, we have like literal bestie ESP. And she's like, I was waiting for you to just like tell me. And I remember just feeling like vulnerable asking for that. It's just asking for time to just like kind of not unload and like put my emotional drama on her, on her, but just to be like, this is where I've been and this is how I'm feeling and I don't even know what, what I need to ask for right now, but I just want someone to hold space and I don't want anyone to try to fix it. I just want to be like held. And the result on the other side was feeling 
so supported, not feeling like a burden, actually feeling like it brought us closer, which is what I want, and not feeling weak. I actually felt strong. I felt like my own strength in my willingness and ability to just be honest that the strongest of people also go through things that are challenging because I'm playing a really big game. Mm. I'm risking really big in my life right now. And that requires a high, high level of support in order to in order to do that and not have it negatively impact my physical health, my mental health, or my relationships. So even just, and I know it's so easy to like look at someone's life on the outside and, and see the relationships, see the friendships, but even just this in like the last six months, that has been a huge breakthrough for me in creating more closeness, even with the women who I adore and I consider us close, but in that moment that I was willing to be vulnerable, the relationship went so much deeper. Oh, I love that. I really yeah. feel that. Mm-hmm. Well, I wanted to learn a little bit more about your last year and not in, you know, a, a really, I want to know deeply. I'm like, well, I'm open book. <laughs> where, where do we want to go? I know that you've shared a lot, even just on your show, about how you really found a lot of stillness this last year. Let's call it 2023. I don't know when maybe it started, if it was like a January thing or when you started that and you did some solo trips. I would hear you talk a lot about meditation. Yeah. And I, I mean, I personally don't do slow very well. So that was one of my big things. And I was like, when I have the opportunity to chat with Lindsay, I really want to learn about how she slowed down. And it is also very cool to have seen what you just recently launched. And I want to kind of get into the expanders yeah. retreat and, yeah. and that new chapter for you and powerhouse women. But I would love to learn what that, you know, journey felt like from really recognizing and honoring and taking the action of slowing down. You said no to things. You closed down some of your programs and offerings, which in turn also meant revenue in your business. Mm -hmm. And I know you guys, even for you and Elliot, as husband and wife, you went through some big changes with Elliot's sort of professional journey as well. Mm -hmm. So I would love to learn more about your slowdown year. Yeah. And I, I also want to acknowledge that my version of slow probably doesn't look like like someone else's. I I had to really come to terms with a few years that my my pace doesn't look like anyone else's pace. And I say that because I think, you know, so often it's easy for me to compare where I am to someone else or even like, okay, well, this person is talking about stillness and I'm feeling a call to that, but but I don't know, could I, could I slow down that much? Or, you know, I'm sure there's people who look at me and don't think this looks very still at all. So defining that by your own terms and really like, deepening that connection to your own intuition what are you being asked of you might being you might be in a season where you're being asked to be really bold and say yes and be out there and be busting through limiting beliefs and fears and I've had those seasons and I got to a point where I just felt that I wasn't creating the space that I really need in order for my best ideas to come through and learning more about myself through like human design and even like the Enneagram, like really learning about how I'm uniquely wired. Everything comes back to this need for a lot of alone time, stillness and quiet and just creating margins in my life. And I got to a point where I just didn't feel like I had that. And, and it was more the fact that in my business, I felt like I was trying to have a solution for everyone. Mm. I don't want to leave anyone behind. Yeah, I got you all. I Come just, on. I'm like, you want what? Okay, great. We're going to add that. And I think that actually has value. And I talk a lot about in my community, um, I've had these seasons, I'll call them like my buffet season where like I'll allow myself to try on different things, but with the intention that I'm going to, I'm going to eventually clear from my plate, whatever isn't like, you know, you think about like eating at a buffet, like my favorite foods if something is like a meh I'm gonna eventually clear it off the plate so I got to one of those points where we had added you know we had added offers that honestly if I'm looking back I added them because someone else told me I should because someone else was like oh memberships you should have a membership recurring revenue like that's where it's at and that wasn't actually a full hell yes from from me I'm a generator in human design so like now I know what a hell yes feels like 
And so too many of those things had crept in. And and I don't believe you have to get to this point of total burnout before you make changes. And mm. that I was just sort of like in this awareness where I was like, I could keep going. I'm probably gonna just, it'll start to impact my my mood, my relationships, you know, that I really cherish. And, and I don't want that to happen. So my business partner and I, both very intuitive we've got you know bestie esp so we were both kind of feeling it and it felt scary it felt scary to say like hey our biggest money maker is this year-long mastermind yeah let's not do that this year so it seems like a good idea that we're just going to close that and it's so weird but when you know it's a yes i didn't even question it yes does it feel uncomfortable of course you're starting to like do the numbers and do the math and be like can we really make this work but because I've done so much inner work to clear away other people's opinions and and really tune in and know what mine feels like. It was an easy but challenging yes. So that was first to go, just cut it, just gave it a haircut. Yeah. Then, you know, it was, okay, now I feel like we're being called to also cut this other, you know, very profitable, very easy to facilitate offer, which was this membership. And, and just listening to that little by little, but, It came to August, um, heading into September, we were wrapping up the membership. And what I now realize looking back is a part of why I was being called to clear the space was when I was in so much activity, when I was always on Zoom calls, always planning content, just really serving from a beautiful place. And I was loving everything I was doing. I didn't have any time to feel. I didn't have any time to feel just some emotions that were coming up, some fears that were coming up. And that led to that season where I started to really, it all, it all started to bubble up, you know, like, like vomit that's kind of bubbling up and you're like, oh, okay, this is, here it is. And, and what I, I sense to be true and we can check back a year from now is I, I just think that I wasn't listening because I had such a full plate. I couldn't hear those little whispers about what was next. And and all I can say is that I'm I keep getting the the guidance from my intuition, whoever you believe, you know, your intuition higher power comes from, just to clear space. And I don't know what I'm clearing it for yet. Mm. And I think that like to no one really talks about being in that moment. I can't wait to come back and say, like, oh, it was for this or this huge opportunity I just had to keep space clear for. But no one talks about how hard it is to be in the space, especially when you're someone who loves to be active and loves to be doing and contributing to to just really know that I'm still supposed to keep space clear. It's been really, really challenging, but also there have been such beautiful lessons in it because I I'm changing in the midst of it. And do you feel a different way because of welcoming this space? I do. I feel I feel a different way on the other side of processing through some of those emotions that I wasn't leaving time to feel before. And it wasn't anything it wasn't anything even that traumatic. It was it was just some things that I what I now realize looking back I was doing in in a lot of activity trying to control things. You know, you mentioned so my husband left his very safe, very comfortable corporate job. We're very heavily in on a real estate project that, you know, just is a bigger risk than we've taken before. It still feels like I wouldn't change it for the world, but I realized how much of like my safety and security I was placing in money and in what was in my bank account. And I was used to having different numbers in my bank account. So then I just wanted to like overwork to make up for that. But what it wasn't requiring me to do was like actually lean into what I fully believe is that, you know, abundance is an energy and it can come from who I'm being, not just what I'm doing. And I think I was operating from this place of fear that I didn't realize I was until I paused long enough to, to, to understand the motivation that was underneath it. So I'm not saying that I'm always going to just be in stillness, but I think I'm rewiring my whole relationship with work and money and, and how I'm generating abundance right now and breaking, breaking some patterns that have been like deeply wired into my core from birth beliefs about like, you know, money doesn't grow on trees. It only comes from hard work and, and if you if you continue to look at life through that context, you're going to reach a max capacity for how hard you can work. 
So now I'm just relearning, well, what does that look like at the next stage? What are the, what are the people who are making that next level of impact? How are they operating? And they're, they're enrolling the help of other people which if you're not great at asking for help is something like I'm just like a baby deer with my little wobbly legs learning how to do. So that's a long answer to say, you know, there will be times if you're really committed to this growth journey, there will be times where you have to stop most of what you're doing so you can on a cellular level become a different version of you that's required for the next season. I love that so much. I feel yeah. very seen, yeah. very seen listening to that wisdom. <laughs> And it's uncomfortable. Yeah, I'm like, I'm sweating. <laughs> How have you, you know, taken this last year, this stillness, all, everything that you just shared, how has that dipped into your morning or day-to-day -day routines, but even also how you look at a week? You know, I think a lot of our friends, our peers, ourselves, you know, mm. we, we can be extroverted, but also really love a good introvert moment. Yeah. And that's something that both myself and Matt have really discovered in our last, even more six months, it's not even been a full year, where we mm -hmm. look at our week at a glance, of like how much socializing is there? And yeah. where do we want to ensure that there's protected time for, you know, pizza and movie night on a Friday night in sweatpants with dogs? which that's my plans tonight, just in case anyone was wondering. I'm envious. I'm putting a dress on. Oh, gosh. Yes. So I'm, I'm, I feel the coziness of your Friday night at home it's, tonight. And I will, I'll, I'll be, I'll represent for, for both of Please us. Please Because do. it is. And, you know, and, and what a perfect contrast, right? Because you're, you're here in Phoenix. You're maximizing your time here. And that's, that's almost sort of how I've realized that I, I do work best is, planning these times where I'm going to be on and I'm going to be fully on and I'm going to be present and showing up and deepening the relationships that matter most. But the biggest shift for me, honestly, has been realizing that where I was accommodating everyone else's needs and thinking that I had to show up and say yes, otherwise I wasn't supporting them. But when I was showing up with an energy of like, I don't, I don't want to be here I don't want to be, you know, whether it's, um, you know, I, I'm so blessed to be like asked to be on a lot of podcasts, but if I'm sitting with someone on their podcast and I wish I would have said no to that, I'm not bringing my best. Mm. So I realized that what I thought I was doing to be this person who everyone wanted me to be and show up for everybody. And I thought that was me being the best version of myself. I was actually being kind of an asshole. Yeah. Right. Fair, yeah. Because now when I'm saying yes to things, it's a full yes. And I also know that I'm showing up and I'm actually giving my my best to the person. So it was a lot of like dismantling these, whether it's people pleasing tendencies or just like inability to say no or inability to really listen. And and listen, sometimes I'm I'm saying no. I just just this last week I had said yes to speaking at something. And then immediately when I said it, I felt the ping that like mm, Nope, that's a no. And so then I had to go back shortly after and say, actually, I'm not going to be able to show up for that. And just trusting that I'm actually doing them a favor because I'm not bringing my half best energy to that invitation and trusting that. And if I really believe this, because I say that I do, this is like an opportunity for me to practice who I say I am and what I say I believe then I believe that there's actually someone better or it's actually in their best interest for me to say no or for me to remove myself from that environment because it's allowing space for someone else or it's even allowing them to experience being triggered and work through what that's doing within them. And if we look at like that from a place of like how interconnected we all are and realize like we're not supposed to be everything to everyone. Mm dismantling all of that has actually been the, the key to creating the space because I could be busy every moment of the day and there's a part of my identity that felt very validated by that. So I had to really look at that relationship and also just start to pay attention to what does a no feel like in my body? And I'm pointing like right here to my like Solar gut plexus. because like for me, it's a gut yes or no and it's not a maybe. It's never a maybe. If it is a maybe, it means it's a no that I don't I don't want to say no because I'm afraid to disappoint someone. That's really powerful. And I think that's something that Matt and I have really learned in our brick and mortar entrepreneurship journey, uh, yeah. having, owning our gym, where it's it has not been easy. 
but that you cannot be everything to everyone. Mm -hmm. And I think that's a really powerful lesson in entrepreneurship, no matter what you do, if it's products, services, brick and mortar. I think that's something that we as humans, let alone in business, Mm -hmm. it's a tough lesson to learn, but man, Mm -hmm. it's powerful once you can sit in it and realize like, yep, can't, can't be everything to everyone. And that's okay. Yeah, it is. And, 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 I think the fact that anyone who struggles with that and is resonating with that, it's probably because you have the biggest heart and you love people to a fault. But when I realized that, I think that was the story I told myself to justify continuing to be a yes person Mm. when really I was validating myself and it wasn't actually loving to someone to show up with that less than like, I fully want to be there. I'm fully here with you energy. It was actually doing them a disservice. So once I realized what an a-hole I was, help me break that. Well, real, I'm real sitting fast. here with a, with a full heart of gratitude that, <laughs> that you're here. So this is just extra lucky for me. Yeah. I'm, I'm so grateful. And, and, but that's, that's such a perfect, I think, parallel to like close this loop is the feeling you get to give the people that you're saying a yes mm-hmm. to is, is so much deeper than when we're giving scattered energy to too many people. That's a big lesson that I'm looking to apply mm-hmm. this year. I know we're still kind of, we're at the very top of February as we record this. And so there's still plenty of weeks and months and days ahead for 2024. And that's something that I'm really mm-hmm. looking to adopt myself. Yeah. So I love that that has been a part of our conversation today. And one of the things I kind of wanted to touch on before we wrap everything up is I want to I want you to share about the Expanders Retreat because this is a big, beautiful new mm. project for you and the Powerhouse Women community and something that I can't wait to attend. I am so excited to put this on my calendar when the, the stars align for the timing being right. Yeah. But I want people to be able to know what it is, who it's for, and what they can look forward to. Mm. One of the gifts that comes with space is... I think it it gave me the opportunity to say, okay, well, now there's space and mm, I like this and I like that I get to really design my days. I'm really not doing anything that I resent doing. Obviously, there's always things that that creep in that aren't as fun parts of running a business. But when I sat down and with my business partner and we said, okay, if we were building Powerhouse Women over from scratch, it didn't have to be anything at, to anyone. It didn't have to look the way it does today. What would we what would we want to build? And the first things like, again, that gut reaction for me was our podcast and events. Love and that. it was very clearly events, plural, because we do a big annual event. We're really known for that. But there's something about creating in-person experiences that that really is like the zone of genius, the place where I feel like I get to make the deepest impact and And it's what I love the most. And so once we got to the point where we cleared a lot of space, we cleared the things that were just taking up a lot of time and energy, it started to become very clear that there was just this desire for more in-person connection. And there was a demographic within the community that we weren't specifically serving in this way, which, you know, you can attest to, I can attest to, as your business is growing, as you reach these like higher income levels, I think for a lot of us, I, I don't know if this is your experience, but I, a long time ago, started out earning even like the amount, the most wealthy person I knew in my immediate family ever earned. And and you don't realize all that that's going to bring up, like this, these higher levels of success. If you, if you aren't in an immediate family that like really you saw a lot of that modeled for most of us we need to continue finding like those next expanders so that we don't unintentionally become the biggest fish in the small pond and we're afraid to make a leap because of what that's going to make people say about us or whatever that is so there is this demographic within the powerhouse women community where they're getting to that point of business that they're having to do a lot of this rewiring that what got them to their current level of success isn't going to be what gets them to their next or that they are realizing their their friends just even if they're supportive friends and family they don't know how to support them at the level they truly need so when you're scaling to those higher six and seven multiple seven you know figures it just it's a different set of needs it's a different need for community and we didn't have a specific place within the powerhouse women community that those women could find each other Mm -hmm. because they are just a little bit harder to find right it's kind of like finding a unicorn especially the ones that you actually like really resonate with so i 
we just started to ideate this idea like well what if I loved hosting a mastermind but I was so over zoom I don't know if anyone else is there on that what are your zoom I was like Zoom-bee? I just right yeah we're little zoom bees walking around like you know cross-eyed and I I just wanted to host just the retreats and so I said well why don't we do that I I just gave myself permission to do the part of it that I really loved and I I really am best at which is just creating the experience so my vision for it is so much bigger than this first retreat that we're doing. It's really to create a space where women can find that community, but it can almost become this a la carte mastermind environment where we're hosting one to two retreats a year. You can kind of pick and choose where you want to pop in, but the community is at the center of it, knowing that if you're looking to connect with those kind of women, not who are just successful, but who are authentic, who are really willing to go deep and you know, talk about the relationship dynamics that show up as a, as a woman who's really ambitious and making a lot of money. There's so many things that you don't even realize come along with your higher levels of success that if you're not supported in them, you could start, you could just make the journey harder on yourself than it needs to be and more lonely than it needs to be. So we're hosting our first retreat in, in March of 2024 and I'm so, I'm so excited for it, but I'm even more excited for the bigger vision that's coming on the other side of it. I love that so much. Yeah. I cannot wait to be stock stock the the daily content that I'm <laughs> going to see from this retreat and everything that's going to come yeah. from it. And where can everyone find you? Like if they want to like find the the retreat, yeah. But then you as well, and which we'll of course put in the show notes. But yes. fire away. I I always say the easiest place to start, especially if you know you're listening to this podcast on the go, go to powerhouse underscore women on Instagram. We'll always link everything in the bio there in the little link tree. And I'm I'm not too hard to find on Instagram um, myself. But yeah, plug into the community. I mean, you have an amazing community. If you're you know craving even more more you can you know plug into what we're doing with powerhouse women and I just think at the end of the day you know we've we've built this community around the motto that we're just not meant to do business and life alone and that's become so true even more true at this stage of my my journey and my growth and I'm just so grateful to have people like you and Matt and and the amazing community that you surround yourself with in my life because Mm. That's what it's all about. And that ultimately, if anything else, has been the key to my success. Do you know that someone at the dinner series event yesterday asked if I was a little baby Lindsay? I was like, when I was talking about what I would do and inspire and move, like, oh, so you're like a baby Lindsay? <laughs> like, oh my God. Yes, absolutely. That's I'll a, take that's it. A, that's a full body yes it. for me. I will take it. <laughs> it was a big win from yesterday. And I will I will leave that. Oh, and I, I just have the fullest heart spending time with you and calling you and Elliot as friends. And I'm just so grateful that you took time out of your day to spend it with me and that the Inspire and Move community gets to hear and feel everything that you have. It's been just an honor to gaze into your eyes for an hour. I love this. I'm gonna make this a make an annual this thing. This is gonna be our. We have to. We need to make like a gif of this of just us <laughs> lovingly gazing into each other's eyes. I might have like a 30 degree head tilt while I'm gazing. Exactly. <laughs> Thank you so much for being here. I have so much love for you. I love you too. Thank you so much for listening. If you love this episode, it would mean the world to me if you took 30 seconds and shared this on social media, send it to a friend, or leave a five star review. There is power in community, and I am so grateful to have you part of mine. 